everyone and welcome back to our Aphelius Vintage and Handmade. My name is Naomi and I'm so glad you have joined me today. Today's episode will be all about sewing books, both vintage and modern. I love to collect them and if you do too, this is the video for you, so stay tuned. I have quite a few and the vintage ones are my absolute favorite. Uh, I don't have a lot of modern ones. The modern ones that I do have are things that have been collected probably from my local library sale when I can get them very inexpensively and uh, I found a lot of good things there that are great references to hang on to. Um, and then I also have the uh, Gertie sewing books um, which are modern but of course they're about vintage sewing. So. Uh, everything else I have is um, pretty old. So I'm going to start with the oldest and work with my way forward. They may not be in exact year order because I'm just going to grab them from this pile. But, um, you know, it'll be close, you know, 30s, 40s, that era, time period. And then we'll move into some 60s, 70s stuff that I have. And then finally, the most modern. So here we go. The first thing I'm going to show you is just a little small leaflet-like book. Also, I have my reading glasses so I can actually see the dates on these things and tell you what they are. This is called Simplified Systems of Sewing and Styling by Doris Anderson. Um, I'm guessing that these were a series because this one says Lesson 2 Pattern Alteration. If you are into sewing from vintage patterns, you know that they come in one size and those sizes are usually relatively small. The larger ones tend to be less abundant and more collectible, um, have a little higher price tag most of the time. Not to say that there aren't some bargains out there because I have found quite a number of them. But even if you just need to make adjustments, as most people do uh, within the pattern, this is going to be a great book for that kind of thing. I have not sat down and read it all, but it is like a little workbook here where you can fill in, take your measurements, fill in, and then it's going to tell you how to do the alterations. So this one was given to me by a friend, so uh, it is definitely a great one uh, that I love to have in my collection. Um, and the copyright date on this one is 1948, so great for sewing those 40s patterns. The next one that I have is in really rough shape. Now this resembles another book in my collection, but I don't think it's the same one. Um, I guess we'll see as we go through. This one, as you can see, is very battered. It's the New Encyclopedia of Modern Sewing. Here's the front. And this one is by... This one has a broken spine. It has pencil writing in it. I think a little child. Got a hold of this one. Francis Blondin. And the copyright on this one is 1949. Here's the inside cover page and photo. This one is not just dressmaking. This one has other sewing in it. Uh, how to make pot holders, aprons, tablecloths, luncheon sets, table scars, cocktail napkins, bridge cloths, bedspreads, dressing table covers, dresser covers, and closet accessories. So this one is pretty cool. It has a lot of nice drawings and photographs. I love these kind of little cartoon drawings. Uh, Post-war, lots of diagrams. Somebody really went to town with the pencil crossing things out, but check it out. Shoes, little beach shoes. I don't know why they didn't like these, they X'd them. <laughs> this one is from 1952, Sewing Made Easy, all about dressmaking and sewing for the home. So again, this one has 
other things besides clothing in it. It says 1,000 easy step-by-step -step pictures, a completely new, completely different guide to sewing, covering every phase of the subject from basting a hem to tailoring a suit, from making slip covers to altering a ready-made garment. Simple, easy to follow instructions for the beginner, hundreds of new ideas for the expert, scores of things to make for yourself, for your home, and your family. Thoroughly indexed and cross-referenced. Mary Lynch is the author. And here's the cover. I'm thrilled this one still has its paper cover. You don't often find these with paper covers. I have a few. Uh, most of them are really always in really rough condition. This one is in nice shape. So I am really happy to have this. And the back. Look at that slip cover. Really cute stuff. On the inside, yeah, lots of nice line drawings. How to buy your patterns. This may be updated from an earlier If it's 1952, a lot of the drawings, the women look like they have hair and some of the styles look like 1940s. So it probably was, you know, starting to be written in the late 40s and um, might have even been published uh, a little bit earlier before this one might be a revised edition. Either way, um, let's see, my receipt is in here. Got this one at Bell Star, $5. So can't be beat for that. Definitely love having that. These are such good references. Okay, now here is a couple. I have two. These are two of my McCall's books. This one, this is another receipt from Bella Star. When did I buy this one? September 2018. $3.84. This is McCall's complete book of dressmaking. It does not have a paper cover. I almost feel like I have another one of these that does have a paper cover, but it's not right here. Um, this one is by Mary and Corey. And this one is all about specifically dressmaking. It has beautiful color photographs. I didn't look at the date on this one. Look at that for you in a second. 1951. If you uh, like any of these books and specifically would like to add them to your collection, um, a great place to look is eBay. If you don't have um, like local used bookstores, they usually always have a crafting section and uh, sometimes you can find things in there. Um, eBay, Etsy, so cute. They don't always have color photos so this is really nice for 1950. Oh, what's this? like I just want to stop and uh, say, <laughs> read these and um, find what I saw. just start sewing. Oh, look at this dress. Oh, I love this. Now this is probably, I would imagine that since this is a McCall's book, that the patterns they use are McCall's. And I, they it's possible that they are referenced in here, what, if they're numbered. Um, I, I, I want to say that I've seen that in some book before where it mentions what pattern was used or something I had seen at some point. Um, I don't see it offhand right here, but I love that dress. <laughs> it's really cute. Okay, then I have this other McCall one. This is McCall's complete book of sewing and dressmaking, but it has the same girl inside. So this one says sewing and dressmaking. The printer is in London on this one. So this may be the British version of the same book. That's quite possible. 
this one has a later date. The first one was 1950, this one's 1954. So I'm guessing that's probably was the case when it was released in the UK. It was this with a different title. Makes sense, but the content looks basically the same. Okay, then I have, now this one I have specifically referenced. I probably had this one the longest. This is The Complete Book of Sewing by Talbot. And I know a lot of people have that, Constance Talbot. Um, this has ju is just a fantastic reference book if you want to just look up specific details on how to do things. S certain little stitches. Um, it's all organized really well. It has a great index. So everything is just easy to find um, and it, it's just general fantastic sewing ideas throughout here um, and the pictures of some the photos of some of the print fabrics are really great um, furnished rooms all kinds of things so if you're and here's the reference section in the back very easy to use and I have looked up specific things especially as I said when you're sewing with vintage patterns they expected you to have a book like this on hand because all of the directions are not on the, the primer it is just not there the way a modern pattern is um, they expect you to know how to insert, like it'll say, um, insert a slide fastener. They're not going to give you the detailed instructions for that. They mean a zipper. They were called slide fasteners. Um, so if you needed to know how to do that, you would reference your sewing book. That's why these were designed the way they were designed, to give you all the specifics of how to do those steps instead of printing that in every single sewing pattern. Uh, and plus women, you know, had gone to home economics classes. Home economics classes still existed when I was in school. So it's only been in recent years that they have pretty much eliminated them or made them just electives, uh, which I think is a shame because uh, everybody needs to sew, know how to sew on a button, don't they? <laughs> anyway, these, if you sew from vintage patterns, get yourself one of these. You usually can find them that expensively, and this is definitely one of my favorites. If you don't mind having, if you want one that's more general, not just specifically geared toward, towards dressmaking, this has all of it in there. This is a great one. Again, The Complete Book of Sewing by Talbot. Then I have the Holy Grail book to Pattern Collectors, Modern Pattern Design by Harriet Pepin. This is all about draping. Design Smart Wearing Apparel, apparel by Learning to Create Your Own Patterns. So if you want to take the, your wardrobe and your sewing and more advanced, this is going to help in how to adapt patterns uh, and also come up with your own ideas and things like that. Um, this one has come fully tabbed. I believe these were used as um, like school instruction books in college and so um, the uh, student obviously put on these little typed reference so they could easily tab place, places for reference. I cannot speak. Uh, to help them but yeah more pattern layout and designs so this one when you find it online it's usually kind of pricey I did find this one out in the wild for only ten dollars and it has its paper jacket which often you don't see that either um, but it is definitely a really really good book um, and many people um, look for this so keep your eye out if you ever see one inexpensively anywhere it's definitely a great book this one is the singer sewing book i had not with all the sewing books i have i did not have one that was specific to singer 
this is a very hefty book this one is from 1949 and I don't know if you follow me on Instagram I recently posted the dedication page of this on my Instagram account because I absolutely loved it it says this book is dedicated to women and girls and especially to teachers of sewing everywhere who enjoy the feel of fabric the beauty of textures the precision of stitches the smoothness of seams and who delight always in appropriate fabrics carefully cut and made up for a happy purpose I love that I think that is the best dedication a book can have for someone that sews because that's part of the love of sewing is not just oh yeah I gotta have that dress I'm gonna do it it's that you love the techniques and you um, the fabrics like I said and others have said fabric collecting is a whole separate hobby but it is definitely part of it that you just you just love it you want to touch it you love the prints all that but anyway that is such a cool dedication I really like it this one is from 1949 if I didn't already say that um, again this one is going to go into more detail on your singer machine um, I have my grandmother's old vintage singer I think that had belonged to her mother it's not in working condition right now it's the kind that folds down into a table but this one still has some good instruction on if you are troubleshooting a machine if this happens if that happens again only if you have a more mechanical machine and not one of the more modern digital ones um, but it also you will go into like ruffling and the different you know feet and things like that that were used um, on the machines but it still shows pattern adjusting and different things that you can sew with the different features of machines uh, like this one is featured uh, features shirring and again if you just love them for the artwork it's fantastic I, I love them tucking and pinking and then you get into the furniture stuff again too how to you know make slip covers for chairs and stuff like this I love this bedroom this is designed for a kid but hey I love this bedroom <laughs> And there are some color photos in this one also. And that is that one. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned the year on the Harriet Pepin book. If you are interested in that, it is from 1942. That was this one. This one, I believe, is my oldest. I got this one not too long ago and um, I think this one was purchased at the library book sale if I'm not mistaken this is called essentials of sewing the author is last name is cook let's see Rosamond C cook Formerly Associate professor, professor, Division of Home Economics, Iowa State College of Agriculture and Mechanical Arts, Ames, Iowa. This one is copyright 1924, so definitely my oldest. I don't have anything older than that. Um, let's see if I can find you some photographs. Of course, it starts as many of them do with sewing equipment for the workbook, thimbles, scissors. This actually has photographs in them. They're black and white and they're kind of small. But um, for example, there's your scissors. Let's see if I can find any fashion ones. About patterns. 12 year old girls photograph. Here you go.
Pretty cool, huh? Uh, measuring patterns. Ironing. Oh my goodness. And look at let's check out the iron. Nobody should ever complain about using a modern iron because check out the irons. They used in the 20s. Most of this book may all be sewing by hand. Which in itself is a true art form and fantastic. And if you've watched any Bernadette Banner, you know <laughs> how to darn socks. Very, very cool. I never see anything this old in the sewing realm. And like I said, pretty sure that this is all about hand sewing because I did not see a reference to any sewing machine in there at all. It's the Encyclopedia of Modern Sewing. Getting a little bit more modern here. This one is by Frances Blondin. Now, did I not mention her before? Maybe this is a duplicate. Yes! Here we go. Definitely, this is a reprint. Here's the other. Number one, this book is light as a feather. This thing is hefty. <laughs> so, I said the date on this one. This is the one that's really falling apart on me. Um, this one was from 1949, and this one, the reprint, is from 53. Yeah, 43 is the original copyright date, and then there were revised editions in 5046, and then uh, this copy is 53. Um... This one does not, even though they're the same book, yeah, this is very different. And this is actually not even the quality. The other one was on heavy, smooth paper. This is much cheaper paper. The drawings are different. Um, didn't it say photos? Yeah, it says 500 photographs and drawings. I'm not seeing any photographs at all. Okay. There are some photographs. They're not good quality. I'm sure they've been updated. But I can't say for certain unless I did a side-by-side -side flip through. Page by page. But all the drawings look very different. Here's another little girl. Photo. But yeah, this paper is like super delicate. You can see how browned it is around the edges. And I just did that by turning it. So, they didn't make a really good copy with this one, for sure, compared to that old one. Um, the photographs were much nicer, more clear, more accurate. Either way, I wouldn't say, don't get this book, it's no good. Just in comparison to the original, it's not as nice, but I'm sure the information inside is just as good. Next up... I have a couple of these books that were part of the Creative Sewing Library by Better Homes and Gardens. These are from 1966. I picked these up at the local library sale. Uh, they had other, of course, other specific things. So it's like basically taking different things and putting them each in their own little book. So little small books, like a kid book. Um, this one is Pattern Adjustments and professional sewing tips. So those are the ones I picked up. The others were probably not stuff that I was especially in need of. Um, not big on 60s stuff. If this is all, you know, very basic and simple, the same stuff you see everywhere, but the charm for me is just not there in books like this as far as, um, as a collectible. They're great for just for reference if you're looking for something specific and sometimes the methods are going to change over time of course. So you may find something that you like a method in one of these better than some other book. So I like them for that aspect. Um, they're just not as fascinating to me as um, the older ones. So there's those. 
then let's see this is another similar type book this one just looks like a school book to me i don't know that it is language of fashion series figure types and size ranges um let's see when this one is from this one's probably the 60s also or 70s 1979 um definitely not a time period that i am particularly fond of except i you know grew up then and i was fine with that but not the clothing anyway it still has great stuff in it actual photographs of wolf mannequins to show you um, where your uh, measuring should be, where the hip line is, the apex, all that. So this is a very good technical book. Um, I'm not sure if this was a book used in a school or anything, but it is laid out that way. And anything that is about doing alterations and fitting is always good to have. I would never say no to a book like that. Uh, it's got all of the standardized measurements. Now, of course, these are not going to fit in with today's measuring. Um, this is the girls, young teen. Let me see if you can find the women's and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so the sizes for misses. They're saying this is the body type. And then these are the measurements and the different sizes. So in misses, a size 6 would have been a up to a 32 bust, an 8 to a 33, a 10 to a 34, a 12 to a 35, all the way up to a 22, which would have been a 44 bust, which is actually right about what vintage styling, or excuse me, vintage sizing is on vintage patterns because I do not think it was until the 80s where they radically changed and brought in the vanity sizing um, so these measurements are going to correlate quite well with vintage patterns so that's a good reference there uh, but they also give like jeans sizes and things like that um, sweater sizes and also for um, girls boys men that's all in here um, another good reference again not super fascinating aesthetic that I love but nevertheless had to pick that up again a library book sale um, again here's the same series language of fashion series let's see if this one is the same date this is a little bit bigger book this one's later 1982 but understanding fabrics from fiber to finished cloth. If you're going to sew, you need to choose the right fabrics for the right patterns. Otherwise, you won't, you'll be using a woven instead of a stretch knit where you would need, or vice versa. So knowing about fabric and content and whether something is um, calling the name like the weave of a fabric or the content of a fabric a lot of people mix those up sometimes so this is definitely a useful useful tool talks about wool lace um bobbin lace what all these different things are so if you're shopping online um this is a good book to look for so you always have some kind of a reference um, of what is going to that fabric is going to look like if it's not something that you can actually get your hands on and um, feel in person. Um, creping finish, uh, glazed finishes, um, all kinds of things like that and um, lots of black and white photos showing the different textures. So definitely a good reference book for that. Now, what else do we have? Another Better Homes and Gardens. This one is the spiral bound kind. This one is a much later 60s, 70s book. I want to say my mother had a copy of this. Um, similar, uh, not this exact one, but I remember the picture. I think hers was yellow. 
I did not see a date on this one. 61, 1970. So yeah. Um, photographs, line drawings, again the basic stuff but not my time period and this is not in the greatest condition either I'm not sure where I got this one but there's some water staining on it there but you can kind of see and like I said it's always good to have multiple opinions on how to do the same task because that way then you can choose the one that you find uh, that's most appeals to you uh, this is probably one of the last books I would reference, um, but yeah, there's some interesting things in here, like maybe on beading and sequins. I don't necessarily see that in a lot of books. So there could be just that one thing that you need in a book. So that's why it's helpful to have um, a, a variety. This book I see around quite often at secondhand shops old used bookstores this is very common they continued to print it for quite a number of years um, and it, sometimes the color of the book is different but again it always has this design on it I don't know if it's always the spiral bound it might be um, but yeah if you can see one grab it next uh, I got this one also from a library sale this is the Bishop method of clothing construction which is a very popular um, dressmaker book and it is different from what I have heard in some aspects than other type of sewing the bishop method I'm more it might be more draping involved in it um, I've not read through this but I have heard of it this one is from 1966 original copyright was 59 this is definitely a revised one lots of line drawings and photographs on how to put things together this is very helpful uh, where a lot of the other books don't have construction photographs like this this is a good thing to have because you can actually see um, the thing being put together not just a photograph of a finished object um, so that is definitely helpful so there's that and then I have the classic Vogue sewing book this has everything in it this is an older copy you can find these and I think most people that collect sewing books have this I'm pretty sure you can get it on eBay and Amazon this edition is from 1975 again not the most fantastic drawings but it is the Vogue book and Vogue is Vogue so their information is usually pretty good um, I may have referenced this one a time or two <laughs> 70s fashion So yeah, that's a that's a great this is a great classic to have on hand. Enough said on that. Then I have got a Coates and Clark sewing book, newest methods from A to Z. This one is slightly again in my terms more modern, probably late 50s, early 60s. I don't recall where I got this one. 1967. I can always tell just by the artwork and the font style when these books are from. This is going to be a relatively basic information book and it is done in alphabetical order so that is its little trick of um, being different. You want to look up fasteners and then gathers and sharing and grain it's all in alphabetical order. Hand sewing, hems, cute little drawings. So there's that. And the last vintage sewing book I have is another McCall's. This is a larger one. This is the McCall's sewing book. Um, 
this may be the same as one of the other McCall's, but revised again. Uh, this one's 1968, set second printing of it. First one was 63, so this actually might be a little different. Equipment. This is another good basic all around fitting, sewing everything, sewing book. Adjusting your pattern, preparing woven fabrics, pressing. This one does not have as much household stuff in it as some of the 1950s ones and I think that's pretty much because a lot of those things they were making just weren't in use anymore. Uh, a lot of those things were things that were just being bought and more women were starting to work and they just did not have the abundance of time if they would sew clothing that's one thing but to make all those little fiddly things for your entire house I just don't think that was happening as much that was really on its way out because that was stuff that um, people did more in 20s, 30s, 40s, through that time period, even into the 50s, but I think by the time this book came out, um, that stuff was not really uh, being done anymore, so the majority of this is just clothing and maybe curtains and some other like altering uh, clothes stuff in here. Still, good book. This one's kind of a thick one. Can't remember where I got it but uh, I'm pretty sure I had this one for a while. Probably the book sale. I think this is one that um, I've had in multiples before that is readily available. You tend to find this one, so keep your eye out for this one. It's uh, definitely a more common one. And that is all of my vintage sewing books. I have three other books I wanna show you that are older that border on sewing. They have some sewing content, but not completely. And then I will get into the more modern ones. These, you may have seen some of these or heard me refer to them in one of my other, my actually I think it was my last podcast episode. Um, these books are actually old school textbooks. Some high school, some college, uh, or both. But I discovered this first book when I was in high school. It was in our high school library. It was not being used as a textbook because the copyright on this one is nineteen fifty six is the original copyright, and then this is the revised nineteen sixty edition. Majority of it is still like very fifties inside. Here's the book. It is simply called Dress by Bess V. Oerk. And, of course, when I saw this, and I was just a teenager in high school, I immediately, you know, I fell in love with it. I wanted it, and I would check it out all the time, and I wanted to keep it. So many years later, after I was married, and uh, searching eBay, I thought to look for it, and lo and behold, I found it. And I was so happy to finally own it. It is a textbook that has it's about wardrobe planning, sewing, um, packing, uh, budgeting for your wardrobe, deciding what you need in your wardrobe, accessorizing, um, you name it. Uh, there's a photograph of a girl in here, how to pack a trunk. There's a, yeah, a girl that's traveling, and I don't know, this, I love this photograph. This is my favorite photograph in this book. Um, it says, the um, comment that goes with the photo is, to enjoy vacation the most, you must take glamorous extras with you. This sub-dev is packing fragrant liquids so they will make the journey successfully. Here she is. She's got her perfume. Check out her earrings. She's got dangle hoops on. And she's got her little suitcase and packing her perfume in, in on her bed. I love this photo. I don't know why. I just love it. I want to know where is she going. She has to have her fancy little extras. And, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, this, you know, tells you how to pack. 
how to take care of your clothes, cleaning, um, stains. It's a very home ec type book geared around um, clothing and fashion and um, that kind of thing. But I absolutely love these books and um, there obviously were more out there that I was not aware of. So this was my very first favorite. And then I recently acquired Clothing for Moderns. I showed this in my last podcast, so I won't go into much detail on this. It's the same concept. This one is by Mabel Irwin. This one is from um, 1954. So this one is much earlier than that one. That one was late 50s going into 60, but it is the same concept of instruction gearing a lot about clothing in this one. And then I have another one. This is How You Look and Dress. Again, this is another textbook style uh, book. This one is from... Um, 1955 with the original copyright date being 1949. And again, I showed this one in my last podcast. That would be podcast episode... Four, I think I'll pop it up in here if you want to take a look okay so this is the final segment these are my more modern books that I have picked up here and there and the first one is called sewing vintage style it is actually it says it's by Mary Jo Hinney and I believe I got this one in a library sale also it's not really about clothing or anything it's just about all about uh, little projects that you can make to maybe enhance things um, let me see when this one is from that will kind of give you the idea of what it is 2005 so 15 years ago um, little gifty type things little boxes with like rosette trims, edging for towels, making some fancy decorative touches on pillows, adding tucks, buttons, things like that. Um, Dutch laundry sack. That's actually kind of cute. And um, enhancing little aprons for girls, fancy felt pin cushions, just little projects, things that you can give as gifts. That's mostly that what that is but all the, the little patterns are in here for you to trace off so that's you know convenient if you want to just make some nice little thing to give to somebody these these are really cute these are like vintage needlepoint pictures um, and they give you the transfers I believe yeah and they tell you how to do some of the stitches um, ribbon work that's kind of a cool book Boy. and this I have wanted to explore for a while and I just have not gotten around to it this is called vintage pattern selector the sewers guide to choosing and using retro styles includes 15 digital patterns on disk so if you have a computer that still has a disk drive it has patterns on a disk um, I think it's kind of like trying to bridge the gap between modern and vintage so to make modern styles look a little vintage or vice versa vintage styles look more modern but it kind of has everything sectioned into the different time periods and of course the ones I'm most interested in are the 30s through the 50s and it gives you like what these things may would have looked like say for example the little back black dress so some of the older versions like there's an older pattern for it and then some more modern and what it would look like now now being I'll tell you when this book is from 2013 so not that long and 
there was one in particular that I liked. So it's basically kind of like a pattern book to give you, you get the patterns on the disc and then I guess you can alter them. Not a hundred percent sure what their idea is, but here's a nice box pleated skirt. It says 1950s. It's pretty basic. Um, even looks 40s. Um, that gourd design. It's kind of a 40s thing. The 50s skirts tended to weren't as A-line. They started to become a little more pencil-like. Uh, looks like you can do this maybe in different lengths. It has directions for doing a circle skirt. Everybody always seems to want to make those. So there's that. So if you can get an inexpensive copy of this, pick it up. I wouldn't, I think when I got it, I looked it up on Amazon. It was still pretty pricey. Uh, I bought it secondhand somewhere. So uh, it has nice little appliques. Of course, I'm in love with the cherry applique right there for the circle skirt. So yeah, it's basically I like having a bunch of patterns. Turban patterns. The Vintage Pattern Selector, if you're interested in looking for one of those. I will pop a link to Amazon if I find it down there. Uh, another library book pickup is uh, 10, 20, 30 Minutes to Sew, Nancy Zimmerman. She is always a great reference. This is super quick knits. Uh, I don't do a ton of knits, so I don't have a lot of references for knits. So this is kind of good for me to have because if I'm working with knits and I want to look something up, I'm mostly going to, you know, only find it in this book. So this is a more modern, this is probably my most modern sewing book that's not vintage inspired in any way, uh, that just has things with dealing with sergers, which I do not own yet, but for me it is um, a good one to have to help me balance out all the vintage information that I have. This one is from 1992 and I'm quite certain it's another library book so anything Nancy Zimmerman is good. Uh, she was great on TV and her advice was always really good, practical. And lastly, which I won't go into much detail on this stack because for two of these, I have already done a flip through, so they are in their standalone. Um, they're in their standalone videos, which I will link these up top, so you can check out those whichever side it is. I never can remember. Um, so you can check out those in more detail. Um, I've forgotten. I think which one. I think it was. Um, Anyway, these are the Gertie books I'm talking about. If I have lost you, the first one is Gertie's new book for better sewing. I only, this is the most recent one I have got, even gotten, purchased. Even though this is her first one, I only recently purchased this one. So, uh, I have yet to really peruse this one. Um, has the patterns included. I really like her patterns. I like her basic designs. I like that her sizing is great. And, um, oh my god. Yeah, see, I haven't looked at this one too much. I kind of need this right here. I have suiting. I kind of need that. <laughs> I'm going to be so happy when I get that table built so I can get busy again. So I will eventually do an actual flip through of that one. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Gertie Sews Vintage Casual. I have sewn from this. I have made the circle skirt in here. I want to say that's all, but I think there's like shorts. Yeah, there's shorts in here I definitely want to make. I have some pink fabric that I got at Savers that would be perfect. Um, I really need to whip them up. So there's that one. And then there is the 
Purdy's Ultimate Dress Book. This is the other one that I have a flip through for. I will post the link for this one so you can check out the video on that if you want to see everything that's inside of it. And the most popular video on my channel is my flip through for Gertie Sew's Jiffy Dresses. This is a great book. I have made the popover dress in a kitty print that was from Joann's. Um, if you don't have this book and you're a beginner, get it. It is really, really good. I had last sewing project I was working on, I was starting my swirl dress and I uh, just didn't get to finish. So I want to get back to that. I want to make more swirls because I feel I made it in one size too big because I made a mistake reading the size chart was for a different dress. And so I want to make another one of these the popover. Did I call it? Did I call this the popover or did I call this the swirl? I don't know. This is the popover dress if I said that wrong. Um, the swirl is another book that's inside but I will also link to this one up here. Uh, this is a very popular video on my channel so if you're interested in seeing page by page everything that's included in this take a look at that video and be sure to leave a comment. That is it. I have gone through all my sewing books that I currently have. Wait and see if I do not find a, another book laying around somewhere in the house in an odd spot and I'll be, oh great, I forgot that one. So it doesn't matter. Either way, it's probably very similar uh, and uh, I'll just post a picture of it on my Instagram sometime. And that is all there is for today. Like I said, I will be doing another video of the fabric stash when I start the build on the sewing table. If you have not already seen my sewing table video, please check it out. It's going to be a fun project and I would like you to follow along with me on that. I'm really excited to get that going. And so if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Give this video a thumbs up. It helps me get my rank up a little bit into the um, search algorithm that YouTube has, the big mysterious thing. And um, leave me comments. I love to hear your opinions. What sewing books do you have? Do you have any of these? Do you want to put any of these on your wish list now that um, you've seen them? If you want any more information on any of them specifically, let me know that. And uh, I just want to hear what you have to say. So thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you to my over 400, inching up on 500 subscribers. We have a giveaway that will be coming soon when we hit 500 and get a little buffer over that because sometimes they come and go real quick. So when we hit that 500, there will be a giveaway three different styles, one for sewists, one for knitting, and one for purely vintage lovers. So you will have your pick of which one you want to enter into the drawing for. And I won't say what they're going to be yet. I'm still working on that. Some ideas are floating around, but it's not concrete. And either way, it'll be something fun, something you'll like. So I've said enough. I will say goodbye for now. And until next time,